Clock, plate, coin, cookie, and ring. These are just some of the real life representations of circles. Yes, circles. Today we are going to learn about circles and its parts. So today, join me, Ma Mary Jane C. Palara, as we learn about circle and its parts as we achieve the following objectives. The following are our objectives for today. At the end of the discussion, you are expected to 1. Define circle and terms related to it. 2. Illustrate the different terms related to circle. And 3. Share real-life representations of circles. Stated below is the reference used for this lesson. Before we start, I want you to look at the puzzle and find as many words related to circles as you can find. You may list down the words in your paper. Are you ready? I will give you 20 seconds to do that. Two and one. Now let us check how many words you've found. You should have found the following words. Diameter, radius, second, center, tangent, chord, and arc. How many did you get? Well done if you got most of those words. If not, don't worry because we are going to learn about the definition and examples of the following. As you can see in the diagram, we have four circles. But the problem is, how can we distinguish one circle from another? Again, the question is, how can we distinguish one circle from another? You're right. Just how we determine or distinguish one person from another, we can distinguish one circle from another based on their names. So for the following circles, their names are Circle M, Circle A, Circle T, and Circle H. The question is, how did we determine the names of each circle? You're right. We name circles based on its center. So the letters at the center or the points, the name of the points at the center is representing the name of each circle. So again, we have circle M, circle A, circle T, and circle H. Now, there is a way for us to notate circles or for us to name circles. As you can see here, we use the symbol circle with a dot inside and then the name of the circle. So that is read as circle M. This one is read as circle A, circle T, and circle H. That is our notation for circle. Now that you are already familiar with some of the terms related to circles, I want you to match the colors of the lines or line segments to the part of the circle it represents. I will give you 20 seconds to do that. So for you to easily do that, you may just um, write the part of the circle and then the letter or the color of the line or um, line segment it represents. Are you ready? Let's start. Yeah. 
we are going to check your responses as we go over the different parts of a circle. The first one here is the center. The center helps us determine the name of the circle as we have learned a while ago. For this diagram on the left, we know that the center is point A, so we call this circle as circle A. The next part of a circle that we are going to learn is radius. Radius is a line segment connecting the center of the circle and a point on the circle. It is named using the letter of the center and the point on the circle. As for the illustration on the left, the radii, which is the plural for radius, in circle A are the following. We have line segment AS, line segment AM, and line segment AT. Those are the radii in circle A. Next is the chord. Chord is a line segment whose endpoints are both on a circle. It is named using the endpoints on the circle. In the illustration, the chords are the following. We have line segment MT and line segment ET. Both of their endpoints are found at the circle or on the circle. So they are considered chord. A special type of a chord is called the diameter. A diameter is a chord that passes through the center of the circle. The length of a diameter is two times the length of a radius. In our diagram, the diameter in circle A is line segment empty because it passes through the center A. We also have the secant line, which is a line that intersects a circle in two points. The second line in circle A is line SH. The difference between a second line and a chord is that a chord has two endpoints, while a second line is a line and it has two arrowheads. It means that it can be extended on both sides. We also have tangent line, which is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. Again, at exactly one point. While the second line a while ago intersects the circle at two points. For our diagram, the tangent line in the circle is line LT. Again, line LT is the tangent line in our diagram. The intersection between the circle and the tangent line is called the point of tangency. In our diagram, the point of tangency of circle A and line LT is point T. So it is here, point T. Last but not the least is an arc. An arc is any part of a circumference or any part of the circumference of a circle. There are three types of arcs, namely the minor arc, semicircle, and major arc. Let us go over them one by one. The first type of arc is the minor arc. It is an arc whose measure is greater than zero, but less than 180 degrees. For example, or before that, it is named using two capital letters. An example of that is arc ET. So we use this symbol arc and then the points it passes through so that is arc ET. It is a minor arc of circle A. 
The second type of an arc is the semicircle. It is an arc whose measure is exactly 180 degrees or one half of the circle. For this one, it is named using three capital letters. For example, if we have here this arc, this arc is named as arc MET and it is a semi or semi-circle arc. The third one is the major arc, which is an arc whose measure is greater than 180 degrees but less than 360 degrees. It is named using three capital letters. For example, we have this arc. We can name this as arc SMT using these three points, SM and T, or we can also name it as SET as long as we use uh, three letters to name our major arc. Those are the different parts of a circle. Let us go over them one by one. Arc, that is an example of an arc. We have center A. The diameter is marked with red. The radius is in orange. The cord is color yellow. The second line is color green. The tangent line is color pink and the point of tangency or point of tangency is purple or violet. Did you get all of that? Very good. Once again, there are a lot of real life representations of circles and here are just some of those. We have the clock, the plate, coin, cookie and ring. In relation to this, your next activity will be this. I want you to take a picture of real-life representations of circles around you. For example, are the objects I've shown you? And then post the image to Padlet.com by clicking on the link below or by scanning the QR code. Don't worry because I will be sending this link to your group chats. Again, you have to take a picture of real life representations of circles around you and you are going to post it in this link. I hope that that is clear to you. Once you have access pad Padlet.com, this is how the window look, looks like. So you just have to paste your picture or the picture the photos you've taken in this um, link. To sum up the content of our lesson for today, here is a song entitled Circle and Its Parts. The lyrics were written by me, but you can sing it to the tune of Way Back Home by Sean. Once again, thank you so much for listening to me. I am Mary Jane Palara, and um, let me end our lesson for today with this quotation by Joseph M. Marshall III. He said, Life is a circle. The end of one journey is the beginning of the next. Thank you so much, and until next time, bye.